I'm hopeful that there are more voices and more perspectives to create meaningful structural change that uplifts women to excel in whatever we choose to study and research. One word I would use to describe women in academia, I suppose, would be bold. I think many of us are, are bold and we're fighters and we continue to fight for things like justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. If I were to choose one word to describe women in higher education careers, it is stamina. If you want to succeed and have an impact in academia, you have to have stamina. Women are drivers of change and change does not happen easily. I think the one word that came to mind was tenacious. Uh, in part because we have to really work hard to prove ourselves um, to our colleagues. We've had to work hard to be recognized uh, for what we do. And sometimes we have to work hard to convince ourselves that we actually belong. I think if there was one word to describe women in higher ed, I would say inspirational. I'm always amazed by the fabulous and meaningful work produced by my colleagues. And I think another word that really comes to mind as well is fearless. Fighting for equality, fearless in representation, and having a seat at the table. So when we ask, how can we create a more equitable environment for women to thrive in higher education, we have to take a look at the distribution of labor. And here the inequity with regard to tenured and untenured instructional staff is a concern. I think it's especially important that we pay attention to the representation of women who come from underrepresented groups, whether these are racial and ethnic minorities, people with disabilities, people who are economically disadvantaged. Well, it's really hard and uncomfortable to call out microaggressions. So having men who are allies, particularly men who are in positions of privilege or power, to call these out, that could be really helpful allow for life balance and not defining people by their job or their role, uh, but expand our scope of each other as people and as human beings. What gives me hope about the future of women in academia is that the number of women leaders is increasing. And not only that, but we are discussing gender issues now more widely and publicly. More women are moving through the ranks and into higher administrative positions. I continue to work with these incredible women and I'm both amazed and excited by the impact they have on shaping the future of this university. As more women enter more spaces in academia, especially positions of leadership, I'm hopeful that there are more voices and more perspectives to create meaningful structural change that uplifts women to excel in whatever we choose to study and research. My hope is that it gets better, that there's less discrimination, that there's less bias over time. Specifically, I hope that there's less bias in who gets invited to give talks at conferences. I hope that there's less bias in who gets promoted to leadership positions. I hope in general, we have more women in leadership positions. Next year, 2022, will be the 50th anniversary of the passage of Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972. Title IX is the law that mandated gender equity in schools. And if we look back 50 years from now to 1971 and look at what higher education looked like in that year and compare it with today, my goodness has that law done worlds <laughs> to improve the opportunities and access for women in higher education. So my advice for women who want to pursue academic careers is go for it. You should definitely do it if that's what you want to do it but you should find good mentors, people who care about you and who will care about your success. I'd advise women themselves, or any, anyone entering higher education for that matter, to not define yourself by the work you do, but allow the work you do to support what defines your life. For women of color especially, this is important because we're often trying to get uh, recognition in an environment and a society that wasn't built for us. In fact, it was designed to keep us out. Do something every day that helps you find your power. This can be a place where we might find ourselves feeling intimidated or feeling like imposters and having to grapple and deal with imposter syndrome. 
And oftentimes it's in our heads. We're brilliant people and all of us bring unique elements and new ideas. Lift as you climb. As women climb the ladders of success, we must lift, we must uplift other women in ensuring continued and sustainable success for all women.